Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, the days of tashriq, the days that follow, the day of Eid, those three days are days of eating, drinking, and thanking Allah, remembering Allah Almighty. We've said that. But what we need to know, don't be wasteful, number one. Number two is reach out to your friends and relatives and reach out to the poor as well. You distribute your sacrificial animal into three portions. A portion you partake from, a portion you give your family and friends and a portion for the poor. If you'd like to change that slightly, make sure the portion given to the poor is not made smaller. The rest of them, you can, you can make your portion smaller and so on, but not that for the poor people. Because we're supposed to be remembering the poor. The idea is not to eat so much that you get sick, but the idea is to eat enough to be thankful to Allah and to eat something different sometimes. To be able to eat halal and appreciate what Allah has blessed you with. May Allah grant us all from His virtue and goodness. Now, what we need to understand is fasting is prohibited on the day of Eid. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has told us that even on the days of Tashriq, which are the three days that follow, we should be eating and drinking and praising Allah. So praise Allah. And I've mentioned how after every prayer, we say, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Allah is the greatest and indeed unto him belongs all praise. That's what we say. May Allah grant us from his goodness. My brothers and sisters, these were the days, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah that we spoke about. And I mentioned quite a few points regarding these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Uh, may Allah Almighty bless us all with goodness. There are a few differences among the scholars regarding some of the matters. When you hear something slightly different, let's not make it a means of hatred and a means of name calling, but rather we learn and we follow what we believe is the most correct according to the scholars we've learned from and according to what we believe is taken from the authentic sources uh, of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from among those who take heed. Let me explain. After the month of Dhul Hijjah, we will enter Muharram. Muharram is also one of the prohibited months. I remember in the first of these episodes, I said there are four haram months. For those of you who don't know what those four haram months are, they are Dhul Qi'dah, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram and Rajab. So three of them are in a row, the 11th month, the 12th month, and the first month of the calendar, and then Rajab. Now, those are the haram months, and I've explained that in the first episode. But what I want to say now is, once we've done with Dhul Hijjah, and we've completed the year, we will enter Muharram. Muharram also has in it, a beautiful day known as Ashura. We are going to get to that day. I want to touch on it simply to make mention of the greatest reason why it has been declared as a great day. It has been declared a great day because according to the narrations, Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet Moses and Banu Israel, his people, were saved from the Pharaoh who drowned on that day. So it was more of a triumph of good against evil. That is the 10th of Muharram. On that day, we're taught to fast the day with a day before it or a day after it. So you have a choice of fasting the 9th and the 10th or the 10th and the 11th. That's of Muharram. It's still quite far away, but it's good to start making a mental preparation of it and learn about it. So that is the main uh, significance of that particular day at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He taught that to us and he told that to us. And similarly, uh, we must make sure we understand that in the books of history, later on, on that particular day, there was a disaster that occurred that we also speak about and we are very saddened by where the martyrdom of al Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhu took place also on the same day. But 
Like we say, we're very saddened. We need to learn lessons from what happened there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all so that we don't repeat the infighting among the Muslims and we actually spread love and good understanding and tolerance within one another. May Allah bless every one of us. And I thank you for joining me for this beautiful short series. I hope we've learned a thing or two and that we've spread it to others as well. Until we meet again, أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته